Hello and welcome to this lecture. Today we are going to discuss the drug use in the treatment of irritable bowel syndrome. So this is a picture of the management, how we manage the irritable bowel syndrome. Number one thing is that we, we need to see the diagnostic criteria. Uh, we are not discussing the diagnostic criteria in this topic, but uh, there are certain diagnostic criteria that need to be followed before the treatment start. The main thing is that, that initially, it is treated with the diet modification and lifestyle changes. And sometimes the irritable bowel syndrome is thought to be caused because of the psychological reasons such as stress. So initially the treatment could be non-pharmacological such as uh, changing the lifestyles and uh, improving the diet and psychological treatment. Then uh, in irritable bowel syndrome, the main thing is that, that it is irregular bowel movement and because of the irregular bowel movement, diarrhea and constipation both can occur at the same time. So if diarrhea and constipation both occur at the same time, uh, then we need to see one by one about uh, the symptomatic treatment. In case of uh, constipation, we need to give them bulk forming laxatives. Uh, if the bulk forming laxatives are not producing the response, then the second choice is lubiprostone, lubiprostone, which we have discussed in the previous lecture. And then the final drug for the treatment of constipation is taxirod. In case of patient having diarrhea, then we need to give lopramide initially as an anti-mortality. Then if the drug is not effective, then uh, allosterone will be given. We will discuss these drugs in, in upcoming slides. If the patient having pain bloating with that, then uh, patients start with anti-plasmodic agents and we will discuss anti-plasmodic agents later on. And then if inadequate response, then we can give a selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors or tricyclic antidepressants. And we will discuss these tricyclic antidepressant and serotonin, uh, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors in upcoming lectures uh, for the treatment of uh, pain and blotting. So this is a flow diagram that how we give the treatment. Let's see the treatment. Uh, as I discussed that for the treatment of uh, constipation, we need to give bulk forming laxatives. And after the bulk forming laxative, if they are not effective, then lubiprostone will be given. Then the, if lubiprostone is not effective, then we give tagacirot. Lubiprostone is uh, working by stimulating type 2 chloride channel in the, in the small intestine, as we discussed in the last lecture. And they increase the chloride rich fluid secretion in the intestine, which stimulate the intestinal motility and shorten the intestinal transit time. The other drug that has been given is tagacirot and it is used, uh, it is a serotonin 4 receptor antagonist and the recommended dose uh, for the treatment of idiopathic constipation, especially irritable bowel syndrome is 4 milligram twice a day for 4 to 6 weeks uh, continued for another 4 to 6 weeks in responsive patient. Then for the treatment of uh, uh, diarrhea, uh, we can give lopramide. The recommended dose for uh, the treatment of diarrhea is same 4 to 8 milligram daily in divided dose and the maximum dose would be 16 milligram. Then the, the other drug that has been given is allosterone which is 5H3 receptor antagonist. It is a serotonin receptor antagonist and it is responsible for inhibition of uh, visceral, effort, uh, visceral efferent sensations, especially used for the treatment of irritable bowel syndrome with the diarrhea. Uh, having rapidly absorbed in the body with the bioavailability is low 50 to 60 milligram, 50 to 60 percent. The half life of drug is 1.5 hours and they are hepatically metabolized using with the help of cyto, with the help of cytochrome P450. But they having a longer duration of action. It is used for irritable bowel syndrome with uh, diarrhea in women. 
in the men the efficacy is still not yet known and the dose recommended is 1 mg once a day or twice daily it reduces the inflammatory bowel syndrome related to lower abdominal pain cramps agencies and diarrhea uh, it is involved in reduction in the mean number uh, of bowel movement per day and improve the stool consistency uh, it has having some toxic effects such as gastrointestinal toxicity constipation uh, from constipation in one people from 1000 patient and ischemic colitis and three patient on, on total of 1000 patient the drug that is available in the market is allosterone hydrochloride with the dose uh, of 0.5 mg available so the usually we can give one mg as i mentioned once a daily or twice a daily the recommended dose where is uh, the irritable bowel syndrome has any link to the stress as i mentioned if if we go back to the clinical management of the treatment of irritable bowel syndrome we mentioned that psychological treatment with sign or history of stress so yes the research found that the stress may play an, as an important role in irritable bowel syndrome and they have done research on 170 outpatients uh, with uh, the ROM criteria for irritable bowel syndrome, they follow the diagnostic criteria and they found that stress intensification may lead to uh, worse the uh, irritable bowel syndrome and they found that chronic uh, life stress uh, was powerful predictor for the symptoms related to irritable bowel syndrome and you can read this paper on it is available online so thank you so much for today's lecture hope to see you again